Okay, we are on lesson two, a better testimony. Started out with a better message, now we're on a better testimony. Um, in working with these quarterlies, I just have some suggestions and thoughts, maybe to help us understand and get more out of the lessons in the quarterly concerning the book of Hebrews. Okay, these are just suggestions in looking at this and trying to think of what went into making these lessons available to us. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says what? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, we'll get out of these lessons what we put into them. Take study, time, effort, medication, prayer, and a desire with the end of not being just knowledge. Knowledge is good. We need knowledge. But application. How are we going to apply what we read? In your uh, <clears throat> quarterly, if you look, lesson two, on the left hand side, it has a text Hebrews 2 1 through 18. My suggestion would be to read that text every day. It won't take that long, some take a little longer than others, but read it on a daily basis. Then you have the key verse. Think about the key verse. Here it's heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Picture it. What does it mean? What does it mean to me? What does it tell us? Then you have number three. The next day, the application the student determines that the words of Jesus require greater heed than those spoken by angels and men. So what's the value? What's the value to me of this message and how does it apply to me? What's the reason for it? What's the purpose? What knowledge do I need to gain? What example is this? How can I apply it to my life? Then we have the daily scriptures. Daily scripture reading. Sunday devotional it starts with. Uh, how, does this, how does this apply to this lesson? And you've got Monday through Saturday. We can either read these or we don't read them. Then we have questions. On page 13, the first one is, why are humility and repentance so important to fool following Jesus Christ? How do we answer that? My suggestion, too, is to concentrate on the scriptures, the scriptures that are in the quarterly, not the commentary. It's good to read what the guy says. There's no problem with that. But concentrate on what the scriptures say and how they come. Use it as a help only. Okay. Then the next thing is each lesson is divided into three parts. First one is seeking the context. What is the context? What's the setting? What's the idea? What's the meaning? What's the truth to be understood in this lesson? The next one is searching the text. Again, examine the scripture. What does it say? What does it mean? Think about it. And then setting the application. How to apply it to my life. What do I do? So again, these are just some suggestions on working 
with these quarterlies for a Sunday school lesson. You know, we can come and listen to what I have to say, babble on here, or you can dig it into it yourself and get a lot more out of it because you have studied it. Not just me, but you have studied it and try and come up with some answers and some of these questions here. So the context. As we studied Romans, the Jewish people had accepted Christ. No, they had not accepted Christ because there was a reason. They had a tendency to hold on to the old traditions because, like Brother Chuck said, for generations they had been taught the law of Moses and the traditions and the teachings of Jesus was totally different for them. And I can understand this. You know, you grow, you grow up and you taught something and then all of a sudden something changes. And uh, it's, it's like being saved. All of a sudden things change. But there's a difference there. You have the Holy Spirit and dwells in us and we can have the Bible to understand and know what's going on. But uh, the problem they had was that number one, they didn't accept Christ as their Messiah. They did not accept him. Even though he was foretold in the Old Testament, in the writings of the Old Testament, they still didn't accept him. They were looking for something else. And the other problem was the scribes and the Pharisees had come up with so many rules and regulations and it sort of bypassed what they were supposed to be really looking for. So last week's lesson brought out the fact that Jesus is supreme. He's the fulfillment of the law and that following followers of Jesus need to let go of things that have been done away with. Something's been done away with, you let go of it. How many of you have a dial phone? <laughs> Anybody? We have one. You use one? Yeah. You do? Golly, you're old fashioned. <laughs> Most people, most people have a, well, you have a cell phone too. Yeah. Well, let me ask another question. How many telephone booths have you seen lately? You don't have a telephone booth, I'll bet you. No. No, they've been done away with. Because modern technology has taken care of it. It's the same thing here we're looking at with Jesus. The old law has been done away with and it's been replaced by grace. So, in Galatians 4.4 it says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of the woman, made under the law. So Jesus fulfilled the Mosaic law and it's been done away with. The traditions, the festivals, the ceremonies, salvation is through Christ alone. He is supreme. Well, the Jewish people today yet still follow some of these festivals and traditions that they had and they follow them because they won't accept Christ as Savior. But again, they have changed things to suit their needs. It's not just like it was in the Bible, so they changed it. You know, we have uh, to be careful today that we stick to the Word of God. You've heard this over and over and over again. But the information available to us, especially on the Internet, is so vast that you can get wound up in things. I talked to a fellow this week, and he said, Did you know that Adam had another wife? He had a wife before Eve? Really? Her name was Lilith. 
And he goes on to say about this wife of Lilith, you know, that he had before Eve. And he says, it's in the Hebrew writings. Yeah, it is. So I did some research on it. Talk about being whooped. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lilith is in the Bible. It's a owl. That's what it is. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4, I think it is. I'm not sure. But anyway, they used that and blew it way out of proportion. So we have to be careful. You know, we're looking at the testimony of Jesus. What Jesus says is important. We have to compare scripture with scripture. All right, let's look at lesson two. Verse one of chapter two. It says, therefore, thou therefore, my son, I'm in Timothy. Timothy's not the right book. Bear with me. Hebrews. Hebrews. Okay. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So what is the therefore, therefore? And understand what therefore pertains to. Let's read Hebrews 1, 6 through 14. Brother Charles didn't get to these verses in chapter 2, so would somebody read those verses for me, please? Hebrews 6, or Hebrews 6 through 14, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 1 through, or verses 6 through 14. Hebrews. Part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Okay, what, what is brought out here a lot of times? Angels? There's a lot of comparison to the angels. Why is that? Why is there so much comparison of Christ and the angels? Um, angels were created beings of God, but the Jews had a distorted view of angels, if I understand it right. Some worshipped angels. Some believed that angels were instruments of God to work out His will. Uh, they esteemed angels on a very high plane, and angels were used a lot. They believed angels were the next highest beings next to God 
So no man, including Christ, could be greater than the angels. And this was one of the problems that they had. They said, here's this, this man, you know, and he's above the angels? I don't think so. So this was hard for them to understand. And again, I can understand this. Looking in, trying to look at it through their eyes. But the problem is, some of these Jews were saved and they were still reverting back to this. Of course, they were babies in Christ. So there's a problem there. And they didn't have the scripture like we do, right? We can turn to such and such a book and say, yeah, this is true, and this is not true, or whatever. They had to go by what people said, by the preaching. So, when it says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip, or slip means to run out like a leaking vessel, let them go by the wayside. Okay, let's look at uh, item one under searching the test. This is page 13. Pay, pay closer attention to the words of Jesus. In Matthew 7, 28 and 29, and that's page 14, it will come to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as having having authority and not as scribes. So Jesus' teaching was different. So we need to pay close attention and live according to the word of God and not according to the principles of the world. God is the authority and not man. In the uh, page... 14 the scripture reference 7 28 and 29 it doesn't it even gives it to you here so when you read it some of them do some of them don't so we need to pay like I say close attention to what it says now Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, If the word spoken by angels was steadfast, that every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So again, bringing up angels was steadfast. And we know angels visited Lot. There came two angels to Sodom and Eden, and Lot said in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So, you know, you can see the worshiping part of angels, the Hebrew people. Angels came to Abraham, Mary, Elizabeth, the shepherds and on and on so they're mentioned a lot of times and again now we have Jesus coming on the scene and he has a better testimony than all of these angels verse 3 it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken of the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 it says from that time Jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there's no other way of salvation and if we neglect this there's certain destruction. And then if we take salvation and the growing in salvation if we neglect the word of God and neglect what God wants us to do, it leads us down to a path that's not destruction, but it could be not destruction as far as hell is concerned, but to our own lives. Bob? Chapter 1 and verse 14 is a very important 
verse because it tells us what angels were created for. And a lot of people miss that. And that's where this continuation goes on in uh, chapter 2. Because in verse 1, or in verse 14, it says, They are, are they not all ministering spirits, speaking to the angels, sent forth to minister to them, shall be heirs of salvation. That is the intended purpose of an angel. To serve God by taking care of us and helping us in times of need. And that that's very important to understand that. And now it was in to comparing the angel to what Jesus had done that prepared this particular setup. So we have a guardian angel. Each one of us. Isn't that great? Thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. So Christ began to preach the gospel and the apostles followed him in preaching. It was confirmed to us by them that heard him. <clears throat> they who heard him preach were witnesses of what he said. They were also witnesses of the miracles that he performed. So all of the true prophets in the Old Testament preached that salvation was by belief or trust in the coming Messiah. And the Messiah came, Jesus Christ, and they rejected him. Remember this book is written to who? Jews, right. But all scripture is profitable, right? So we can learn by trying to understand what he's saying, learn by example. Let's look at verse 4. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. Signs and wonders. Acts 2.22 says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved unto God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves know, through many signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Remember Nicodemus came to Jesus by night? What did, he say? what did he say? No man can do these miracles. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. It's in John 3, 2. So he knew Jesus was different. His testimony was different. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4, it says, there, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Question 1. And then here in the uh, quarterly, again on page four, 13. Why are humility and repentance so important to fully following Christ? Something to think about. On page 15, there's another question on the side, on the right hand side. How do you guard your private time with God and His Word? How do you do that? How important is it to us? When do you set it up? Is there a time? For me, it's the morning. First thing in the morning. Because the day wears on and I get busy doing this, doing this, and doing this, and doing that, thinking about this. And it's night, and oh my goodness. I didn't do my time with God. Easy to do? Easy to do. 
So to me, this this question is important. How do we guard it? How do we guard it? it has to be a priority, doesn't it? A priority, number one priority. Spend time with the Lord. Keep other things from interfering. Okay, let's, uh, the quarterly skips this, but let's look at verses 5 through 8. Comparison again of Jesus and the angels. Chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. to the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come or as we speak but one of a certain place testified what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him thou hast made him a little lower than the angels thou crownest him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he hath put all subjection under him, he hath left nothing that is put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. These things, these words were taken from the Old Testament, which the Jews were familiar with. Verse 6, taken from Job 7:17. 7, Verse 7 taken from Psalms 8, and it's 1 through 9. A little less or lower in the sense that man is a creature. Are we not? We're limited in what we can do compared to angels. We're limited by time, space, power. You know, angels can do things and we don't understand what they can do. But here Jesus now is above the angels, but he's made a war. Uh, you know, some things are hard to understand, but that's the way it is. Jesus, we have to remember, is God. Is he not? Bob? When Jesus was made a man, that put him over <coughs> as far as what man was looking at. As he went through his ministry, as he fulfilled that, he was put back into the position that he had prior to that. Yeah. Yeah. So his position as man has changed, hasn't it? From here to here to back to here. Thank you, Robert. Item two in your quarterly, if you look. I'm same with you guys. I'm, I'm not used to using this. <laughs> I like to go verse by verse. But anyway, item two it says, offer greater praise for the work of Jesus. Offer greater praise. And chapter 2, verse 9, in the quarterly, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, been crowned with glory and honor, that he by grace of God should taste death for every man. Philippians 2, 7, it says, But he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And verse 9 says, Wherefore, wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. 
His name is above Gabriel. His name is above Michael. His name is above any angel. Christ, even though he was made lower, his name is above. You know, I, th I think of this. This is done for you, for us, for me. Should we not praise Jesus for what he's done? John 1 14, the Lord was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. But we see Jesus having made less than the angels, yet who's greater than the angels. Let's look at verse 10. <clears throat> For it became him for whom all things and by whom all things bring many sons into glory to make captains of their salvation perfect through suffering. Romans 11.36 For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. Hebrews 12.2 Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and set down on the right hand of God. Without suffering, he could not have died. Without dying, he could not have made atonement for our sin the creator and sustainer of all things Amen. suffered for you and me. So is not that a reason to praise him? Praise him above any other name. Question number the next one on page 17. says, why is it so important to celebrate Calvary above other worldly achievements? Another question to think about. Why is it so important? Then we come to Hebrews chapter 2 and verses 11 through 15. Someone want to read that? For both he who sanctifies those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So both Christ and his followers are all the same nature. We're all partakers of flesh and blood, are we not? Jesus partake of the same because he had to be qualified to be a sacrifice for our sin. And though Jesus is raised above man, he still calls us his brother. <laughs> A brother to Jesus. Think about it. Verse 16, chapter 2, for 
Verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on the seed of Abraham. Remember, the author of this book is trying to talk to these Jews and convince them that Jesus is above these angels. He's higher. He didn't take on the nature of angels. He took on the seed of Abraham. I'm telling you this, he's saying. Jesus did not have an angelic nature. <laughs> he was not an angel. He was made man. But he came directly from the seed of Abraham. And the Jews knew who Abraham was. And he knew what the, they knew what the Bible said. And they knew that the original covenant was with Abraham. They knew all this. Genesis 22, 18. And in thy seed shall all nations be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Matthew 1, 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Genesis 3.16 Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to the seeds as many but as to one and to thy seed which is Christ. Again trying to explain to these people that Christ is the Messiah. He is the one. Let's look at verse 17 says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and a faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God to make, rec make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And Hebrews 2.18 says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Philippians 2 7 it says, But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made likeness of man. Jesus is compassionate, is he not? Why is he compassionate? He knows. It's like I'm compassionate with Perry, because I know others that have lost a mate. But anyway, he was compassionate. He knows and he understands our infirmities, our trials having a nature like our own. Jesus experienced, as we do, all the infirmities and trials. Jesus experienced heartbreak, pain, rejection, disappointment, temptation, danger, and sorrow. When we go through these trials, and we all do, different ones, what do we do? Who do we turn to? We can do different things. We can sit and have self-pity, which is easy to do for me. Sometimes we can't understand why God brings these things in our lives. But he does, and if he does, there's a reason. We don't know that reason. Maybe we do know the reason. But it happens. But what's our reaction to this? Who do we depend on? Remember, Jesus knows. Jesus said he'll never leave us or forsake us.
you know, the Jewish high priest was the head of the ministries of religion among the Jews. He was the only one that could go into the most holy, and he made atonement for the sins of the people. And this is what Jesus did for us. So the Hebrews, again, we have to look at look at these scriptures as what they're trying to accomplish. Hebrews to who this epistle was written understood the offices and the duties of a high priest under the law. Now he's saying, the Lord, Christ is your high priest. We have a religion today that uh, people don't call him a high priest. They're just a priest and they go to them. Pray to them. Confess their sins to them. What can they do about it? They can listen. And that's about it. It's like praying to an idol who has no ears, no nose, no eyes, no feeling. On page 18 of your quarterly, another question. How do you lean on Jesus daily for encouragement? Another question at the, underneath that. What other things compete for your attention? How can you minimize their impact on your life? And this is the same way. I think these are good questions. Because <laughs> it hits home. Lesson three, a better relationship. And just think about some of these suggestions, just so you're more familiar with the lesson. And maybe some of you might have some input on what you thought about the questions and how, how they affected you or other things that the scripture, again, Focus on the scripture, not on the commentary. Okay. Any thoughts? Any last comment? I, I see the, the Jew had so much problem consider the angel over Christ. They didn't see him as God. No. That's why they wanted to put the angel over him. That's the way it looked. Yeah. Okay. Robert, would you close in prayer, please? <clears throat>